Se sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, once upon a time in a Sen temple, there was an enlightened monk called Banki. So, everybody come to listen to this enlightened master. And he was well known everywhere. And uh, daytime, nighttime, a lot of people always gathering and listening to him. And uh, close to his temple, there was a very macho guy, kind of like a gangster. And he always used to do things to get attention from other people. And uh, he was very, he got very disturbed out of this all the people gathering and listening to this, this bunky. And uh, he thought to go and challenge him because no one put any attention to him and everybody go to this little, you know, a monk and he just do, he's just sitting and talking, that's it. And, but the, this young, strong gangster used to do a lot of physical, physical actions to get the attention, but no one used to care about that. So one day he got so mad and he entered to the, the temple. And once he entered, he saw a huge crowd was were listening to this venerable bunky. And he was on a little stage and with very minimum items and just sitting and he, he was talking. And then from the, the far away from the hall, and this person start to shout, Hey, Bunky, what are you doing? You cheating. You are so ignorant. And you doing, you teaching wrong things. You just sitting and talking, talking. You don't have any idea about life. And people say you are enlightened. And there is nothing like that. You just keep sitting and talking this old, the ignorance people come to you. If you are so capable and uh, argue with me and uh, try to make me a disciple, make me a student of you. And the venerable Banki was uh, talking when he was, uh, that uh, he put his head down when, while he was talking. And one, when you hear, hear that, he look at that, you know, that all the crowd was so shocked because no one talked like this way. And the venerable Banki was so calm, relaxed, didn't say anything in the past. And everybody shocked and thought, what's next? What's next? And then uh, Venerable Bank is with this very calm, relaxed, compassion voice told. So let's have a discussion a little bit first. I want to listen to you. You don't need to listen to me. I like to listen to you. Do you have anything to, to tell me? And this, uh, this gangster told, of course, I want to argue with you. So the venerable Bankito, Bankito, please come forward and uh, told uh, everyone to give the space to him to come forward. And he was so proud. And he gave the, the same, and the, from his stage, he gave the, the same seats, height seat to him and told, come to my right side. So let's have a discussion. And he was so proud because everybody sitting under the, 
the that monk and now he in the first appearance the, this is the first time he get into the temple and he was so proud because why now he get the ability to sit with the same height and the same stage in front of all the crowd because he is the person who used always look for attention and he thought oh wow you know so my my argument going to work and uh, so venerable bank told please come sit here and everybody some people came students came and and make a chair uh, for him so he sat from the right side of the banki so venerable banki to look like this and tall or oh, i am from my right side i cannot see you very clearly i want to see your face very clearly and i want to hear you very clearly so can you come to my left side and this person was so proud and now he's so happy so what he did he took his chair and then slowly went to the left side of the uh, left side of the the monk and sat there and the venerable monk told oh you are so good you are very that uh, innocent and you are very humble and i no need any anything else from you because you already listen to me that's enough for me and by listening that bang that the, this gangster understood that he, there is nothing to argue with that because he already became a student of the the bank and uh, this is a story when you look deeply in day to day life if you look very carefully there are some thoughts arise within ourselves regarding our own understanding and challenge us not the outside people our own thoughts sometimes challenge us and there are some thoughts inside us emotions inside us and it always look for attention it look for attention it is mostly it is not you know need to make this emotions more personal that is the very uh, very behavior of this human nature billion billion years ago whoever used to be in this world as human beings or after eons by eons whoever going to be here when this human form they all going to have same same kind of emotions look at the human history do you think that the people's emotions became matured than the, your previous generations oh it is it is the same because the, it is a, just a very chemical reaction of your brain and once it become a current it need to maintain so that maintain it's kind of like that's where it release necessary kind of like chemicals to to look for feedback so that is where we react to that but if you resist and hold it deeply then it become a stronger 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 but if in the very first level if you look very carefully and see it and accept it so whatever the, the thoughts come to you without separating something and if you accept it and open your heart and open your mind to that whatever the, the emotions that come that emotions has power to brings your wisdom that is what call you transforming your emotions to intelligence so that is a big psychological science nowadays how to transform your emotions to intelligence so one of the thing is in the very first level you should you should have the wisdom to understand and accept it as a kind of like a soiled 
rather than depending and feeding to it and go with it and hold it to it to harboring to your own emotions in the very first level you have to understand it as a very good resources and it is a soiled energy for you to to gain the wisdom so that is the first wisdom you should have because when it come to the buddha's teaching you don't look anything beyond your mind to gain the liberation your mind has 100% capability and capacity within yourself to attain to the in this enlightenment only thing is you have to properly cultivate it cultivate it that cultivation means not something put into it you slowly start to clean it up clean it up so once you start to clear it properly what will happen whether your mind is start to develop itself and recognize things very clearly so once you develop that recognition in that recognition whatever you gain as understanding it become your wisdom so in day to day life so whatever the difficulties come to you whatever the emotions that you have because without that we cannot live in the very basic level from childhood to young age to elders through this life journey that the emotions is a very basic natural thing happening to us but the thing is mostly sometimes some people 100% surrender to the emotions and give up everything and go with it and others completely try to reject it block it and resist it and go against it so in these two ways in the both ways the life become a struggle but if you understand that you cannot separate your life from whatever the the behavior or whatever the nature that you belong so then how you can do this how you can develop this in the very first level how you can transform this emotions to intelligence in the very first level you have to understand just maintaining life is not your purpose you you as a person that you look for higher level of awareness understanding and experience and the liberation so in the very first level if you able to recognize it and then you not going to stuck with what whatever the the moment of experience because when it come to the buddha's teaching especially when it come to the 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 vipassana meditation it is a very critical and analytical method you not going to just sit down and go with the thoughts no you recognize and you accept and you not going to resist anything but you accept it and at the same time you not going to to go with it so that is a different science because we didn't learn it in through in day to day life mostly what we does we, we go with things if we like we go with it or if we don't like we reject it and stay away from it that is what we keep to do all the physical material things that is what we keep doing in life but there is another way in life so that called cheto vimukti you you can liberate from the thought pattern from this two extreme levels rather than go with something or rather than rejecting something and you start to see through whatever the experience happening you start to recognize that whatever the, the thoughts that happening within yourself and no need to hold it to anything the thoughts come as a result of your own experience 
and there is no moment or there is no place to hold. So that transformation, that understanding called Cheto Vimukti. You liberate from your thoughts. So that is a kind of like a liberation in this spiritual practice. It is very necessary. See that uh, I give a very basic uh, conventional example to understand what is this, how this. Look, as a child, you used to play with to uh, toys. And when you become a teenager, you still little bit hold it to that, but little by little, little by little, you start to go away from it. And you, when you become matured and when you become young, you're not going to, you're not hating that toys, but at the same time, you don't have that much desire to hold it to that. So you transform to something. And you don't, you're not stuck with it. And you didn't hate it. You transform to something. And as teenagers, as a young age, you used to like things. And maybe you go shopping and always buying cloth, handbags, ornaments, and oh, many, many, oh, maybe gadgetmatics, you know, many, many electronic items. You used to buy things. But by the time, you understood something and things change. It is not you, you thought and you talk, uh, took a conscious decision. Oh, things change. This is no need anymore. No, that by naturally, you start to absorb the certain kind of understanding to you. And with that understanding naturally, what happening, whatever in your closet, no one told you to, to throw it away, get it out. And the, to, the, the whatever the things that you used to collect and naturally you start to think, this is enough for me. And when you get old, so in a certain level, without telling somebody or without even following any kind of ideas or the thoughts or the the teachings, naturally you come to a place to understand this is enough for me. See how your thoughts transform? So in a deeper level, your experience depend on time, space, and matter. Time, space, and matter. Your thoughts always depending from that. So once your mind able to understand that dependent nature, that is where your liberation happen from the thoughts. So that's naturally you start to, to release from the mind and that is where you start to recognize. So whatever thoughts come to you, it's come as a result of your experience. It is not a something personal to yourself. When the, when the experience change, when, the, when that your perception change, when the environment change, you change, your thoughts change. So that is where you, you rec this recognition itself release you from the idea of, oh, this is me, the, I have this kind of ideas, I have this kind of thoughts, so like that. You transform from the self-centered view and related with the thoughts and related with the time, space and the matter. And the important thing, this energy come from inside you. That is what called emotions. The way you react to time, space and matter. This is a natural process is your emotions. So then what you have to understand rather than becoming so crazy regarding your emotions, rather than holding, oh, this is me. 
or rather than rejecting it, just learn to let it be a little bit. But what you have to do? In, when, when it is there, little bit find the gap to react to that. When the emotion arise, find a little gap to react to it. That little gap will transform you to intelligent. That little gap, to create that little gap, you need a certain kind of understanding and wisdom. So it is another way. Another, another way to analyze this. That's why the Vipassana is mainly the analytical meaning. You have to have this analytical knowledge. Otherwise, analytical the system, mechanism in you in day-to-day in -day life. So this is what. When the perception happens, when something comes to your eye, object, eye, and because of these two, the eye consciousness arise. So it is a consciousness. That consciousness bring the, the recognition. It is only can done by eye. So the ear sound, the ear mechanism come together, ear consciousness arise. It is not happen just automatically. There is, there is a reason, there is a mechanism. So you have to know that mechanism. Nose, the aroma, the, so that, that, that is the object. And then, then your mechanism of the nose, it is not this, this nose, the inside, the whole, the mechanism of the nose. When this all two together come, the nose consciousness arise. Tongue, the outside, tongue object, that means the taste or the food or anything. And the, it comes with the tongue, the mechanism of the tongue, the tongue consciousness arise. It is a consciousness. You cannot neglect it. And the, the, the body and the sensation is the object. And the, once it comes together, body consciousness arise. So the mind, the ideas, so when the ideas arise to the mind and then the mind consciousness arise. So when that consciousness arise, that all related to the that eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, that related to consciousness, there is a recognition happen. That recognition is related with your brain. This all your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind related with the brain. So eye consciousness arrives and then out of that consciousness feelings arise, sensations arise, formation arise and recognition arise. So before the recognition arise, what is happening? The emotions means when the, when the eye consciousness happens in that very moment, there is a deeper current keep going towards the eye with your thought pattern. In that thought pattern, when the eye cons, when whatever come to your eye, in that thought pattern itself start to get mixed with the eye consciousness and then whatever the information coming from the outside you accept it so as example it like this you watching tv and then you you watching a movie or drama or documentary or something you watching then there is an ad coming so then suddenly there is ad come you know and then it so oh this is the world famous most uh, beautiful pen and then it's come to your eye and recognize it as eye consciousness 
so then you 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 have the current the mental formation thought current and related to all the history and the beauty and the success this all things you keep thinking 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 so it is a thought current and then this come and tells oh this pen is the most advanced pen and successful pen in the world so then what happening when it come to i consciousness it say that the advertisement say buy this and you accept it and then you buy it and suddenly you just go and order it so who told that the outside resources told you to buy this and then you go with it so whatever you hear when the outside information say something and you surrender to it and go with it that is the very nature of the emotions so emotions never allow itself to to reject that whatever the outside things and always take you to to that place so even you you watching tv or maybe documentary then it so about a, a kind of like a retreat place or kind of like a hotel or beach and very beautiful life when you see it itself so that is a information coming from outside and that information build up with the certain idea what is that idea whoever see this should come to visit this place so that is the idea they build so that is the information deeply try to give that advertisement to you so then when you watch it what happening suddenly you surrender to that idea and then you go with it so then imagine 100 people if 100 people make 100 advertisement what will happen when within one hour if you keep watching the tv so in that one hour if you see 10 advertisement after that one hour what will happen to you your mind become a mess why because everything that you saw you accept that you accept that you accept that so like that with our eye ear nose tongue body mind so whatever the information come to us and once you you start to go with it you are inside your life become a mess that mess that struggle it itself our real experience so then there is a way that you can break it down you can reverse this pattern because you cannot change the world so then the cheto vimuti in the very first level what is happening when something come to your i consciousness rather than your deeper inner consciousness go with that you allow that i consciousness to to come form feeling sensation formations allow it to pass this all and allow it to 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 come to the the middle of your deeper awareness and still you don't react to that when something come to if you able to develop a method when it appear with the i consciousness rather than going to that if you able to hold it wait little bit and you, if you able to allow that i consciousness to pass form feeling sensation formation when it till it come to recognition and what will happen the all the emotions start to transform to intelligence that's why it call if you in in a way in a hindu tradition there is a saying if you learn to wait you will meet the god so if you learn to wait you will meet the god 
So that is what it says. Because rather than jumping with the outside desire, whatever the information coming from outside, and if you able to hold it a little bit in that one second or two second or three seconds, and you, your, your chemical system, entire brain, and your entire body start to change. But this holding process is not easy. Why? Because from the sansara, we have a habit to go with go with the current. It called deeply Chandarag, Chandarag. It even beyond us, even it beyond this time, it already over, overtook our tomorrow, next week, next month, even it, it's kind of like already released arrow and it keep going, keep going, keep going. But there is a way you can slow down it. How? That is what that we call sati. So once you recognize this process yourself, in the very first thing that you have to remember, you are responsible regarding your life. So you, or you are responsible regarding you. You are responsible regarding who you want to be. So then first learn that yourself. Teach your children and teach your brothers, sisters or teach your friends and give that ability to them to take a decision. So, and once you have that ability, what will happen? When somebody says something to you, oh, buy this, or take this, and you're not going to go with that. It is scientifically proved psychological experience. If you able to take the, the, 100% authority regarding your, your life, when you see an advertisement, you're not going to buy that. But in life, we always and try to develop a self-centered, egocentric life. And then what we do in day-to-day -day life, we try to maintain others according to the way they, that we want. And then what happening later? And then they also, whoever surrender to you, when they have opportunity, they also start to overtake someone else's life. So that, that is, you know, it's, it's a, that is how the society learn. If you want to keep the authority regarding yourself and then you give a hard time to somebody and whoever become a bit that the victim, and then when that person have the opportunity to do something, that person also repeat the same thing. Same thing. And it's a, it's a very psychological method. And whoever, as a child, if ab a, that abuse in that time, when they become young, mostly they also abuse others. So same thing. Wherever that, that, that whatever happened, it keep repeating then to go with that. So then remember, if you recognize you are responsible, so that is a very fundamental that the teachings in the Buddha say, Mano Pubbangamadamma, your mind is the foreigner, you are responsible, you are capable. So then when somebody say this is good, maybe it is good for that person. Who, who is that person to decide regarding you? And how that person think it should be in your house? How that person, even you don't so the, you don't know that person, and you you have never idea. This is the first time you saw this, and this person say, buy this. You without this you cannot live, and then you believe that. So why you go with it? You you cannot. You know, that's the thing. You cannot get out this, this world if you go with 
the other thoughts, ideas, you know, the concept. So then the very important thing, you have to develop very critical, analytical, the method inside you and recognize you are responsible for your own life. When you take that idea and when you take that decision, your entire emotional chemical reactions change and help for you. That is where all most of the people became very success and they went toward it. And whoever attained to enlighten in the samsaric journey and they got the help out of their own thoughts. See, then rather than believing the outside world, and why you cannot take responsibility regarding you, you. And then you get out of the pain. Then you get out of the drama. That you, then you get out of the difficulties. So why you don't want it? Why you want always that drama, hard time, difficulty, sad, worry, unhappiness like that? Because the Buddha, in the Buddhism, it's really talk about this human life. It's not about the, the heaven or the hell or the, the, the deities, or even though it mentioned, it's really talk about the real, very physical, organic problem of this human life. Nothing else. So that is about you. That is about what you experience. So in the very first level, you have to have understanding. I want to to get out of this rather than go with it. If you have that understanding, that thoughts, you start to look for some change. That change called Cheto Vimukti. In the deeper level, it explains another way, but just the practice point of view, because you already you decide. When you decide this is enough for me, there is no way that somebody can hold you. You have that power. So then rather than feeding to this world, start to get the energy out of it. Use it. You can do that. Look at that monk. How he, he accepts that gangster and transforms it to, to a student. And without rejecting, accepting and allowing it to, to come. Then all the, the physical art, you know, when it comes to martial art, judo, aikido, you know, this all teach how to use the other's energy and transform it to your energy. There's a, there's a way physically you can practice, but it mainly mentally you can use this any any psychological situation, any social environment or the situations to transform and gain your wisdom. That is the, the Buddha's teaching. So then you have to look for that. If you don't want to change, how are you going, how is it going to happen? So then start for that. And then you go to the, the other level, another way called Panyavi Mukti. You liberate complete journey and you liberate with the wisdom. So that is a more higher, deeper level. But so what is the, that, that Panya Vimukti means? Yata Bhuta Jnana Dasana. So that's mean, if you able to the, the reality, the truth as it is according to necessary conditions and situations, that itself going to bring a wisdom. So then in day-to-day -day life, rather than making ideas and go with others' ideas, you have to follow the path. For that, you have to develop two qualities. One is called parato gosa jnana. So the parato gosa jnana means it is not listening to everybody. You start to listen to to the, what the Buddha said, Buddha Sutras. And you listen, start to listen to 
whoever around you as a good friends whoever try to take you out of the greed hatred and the delusion so that is one of the parato gosa jnana so you you have ability to recognize oh this is this is show the path to truth oh this will take me to liberate oh this will take me to freedom to recognize that listening to somebody so that oh whatever you listen it should base with the mostly the buddha's teaching not that people's different different ideas then you caught up why because your time is very limited and who knows that uh, tomorrow you can hear or not we don't know you know sun, suddenly that uh, something start in your ears and then only one sound that's it there are some people experience in that when some people call tell bante i cannot hear now this uh, kind of like a, a vertigo or something you know it all is one sound hum sound coming that's it so be very careful so then when you when you listen and find it, find the the right teachings and listen to that another thing is yoni so manasikara that the yoni so manasikara means you recognize it the beginning point of greed hatred and the delusion that is what i call when you see the advertisement if you rather than go with it if you hold it little bit little bit little bit i consciousness form feeling sensation formation and recognition when it come to the recognition you recognize this in the beginning in the desire that whatever hold it to us within our inner this everything happening not with the outside world so then you become more relaxed calm down and you start to maintain your awareness that is the moment you can live with any situation in life so mainly whatever the greed hatred and the delusion arise in, in within us that even though that you see outside reasons if you go with it of course it going to be outside world and you are become part of that outside world and outside world will keep eating that's why it called you belong to mara and but if you become mindful and if you when the things happen to you, when the things arise if you finding the gap and hold it little bit and look little bit deeply and see from where i deeply happen you start to recognize there is a deeper connection in you that is what called sanskar so deeply rooted desires in you to go with it that's why it come to you there is a connection in you so once you see that it any more not going to come and look you even though it exists there and the, there is not going to be a connection so that can develop by recognizing the the beginning point beginning point mean you are seeing your mind your awareness subject and object and how this subject and object interconnected so that is that awareness will take you to your liberation so then in life and in the beginning you have to start with very physical with this very material world forgetting this material world forgetting this physical world don't think about development of spirituality why because your spirituality means the way you maintain your physical and material world so then how you can start finding the gap in between your experience and reactions in that gap you will see the the path to liberation so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful 
may no harm come to you, may no difficulties come to you, may no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbit yo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bavatantara yo suki diga yuko bava. Ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva nuno dantu sabba sampati sindia. Sabbe buta nuno dantu sabba sampati sindia. Sabbe sata nuno dantu. Sabha Sampati Siddhiya Idhammi Punya Kammanga Savakkaya Vanghutu Sabha Dukkha Pamchatu Bless you.